The way we make things is changing, radically. A new set of ideas and trends have emerged and combined to create a new industrial revolution, one led by people and human innovation. They're using ideas like collaborative design teams and leaner, more customizable manufacturing. Once upon a time, a factory made one thing. Now, a factory can make almost as many things as there are people to imagine them. From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. The latest edition of the Air Cargo Africa Conference and Exhibition was held in South Africa some weeks ago. Keith Campbell attended. Air Cargo Africa 2015 was the third edition of the biennial event and was held at O.R. Tambo International Airport, east of Johannesburg. Start Media Events and Marketing Director Priyo Patra explains the origins of the event. In 2010, I had come down to Kenya to just have a look at the Africa, the freight forwarding and the cargo industry out in what was happening in Nairobi because it was really picking up. And the idea just came out there, me talking to people that people say that you do a show in India, why don't you get one to Africa? And that's how the, the birth of the show started. And Nairobi being a very freighter friendly market uh, and also a big cargo origin point, so it just made sense to do it and we started in 2011. The show from perspective of size itself has grown almost double or two and a half times from where it started from Nairobi. We have from the size perspective 2013-2015 is uh, we sold out both the shows completely but the number of the turnout has doubled this year from 2013 to 2015 and almost three times of what it was in 2011. So just the number of delegates who are flying down itself. If we have got more than 550 people, paid delegates that have just come down from all over the world. So we have a total of 1000 people captive between the exhibitors and delegates inside this room. The future of the show is to basically cover the rest of Africa also, but base it in South Africa, because what we noticed was that South Africa being the gateway to the rest of Africa. People like this place and people want to be here. And also we noticed that all the decision makers of Africa are sitting in this area, in this region. What we want to do is add shippers or the manufacturers or the growers because we lack in this room. What we notice is that we, we are talking to each other and we are, we are not talking to the end end customer and we hope to involve more conferences and more uh, additional uh, programs that will entice the shippers and the uh, growers and uh, these guys to come in to the show. I asked Patra if he had any idea of what the event's impact on the air cargo sector in Africa had been. Yes, uh, let's, let's put it out in, in the perspective of 2011 when we started in Nairobi. There were hardly there were not many flights going into. Middle Eastern carriers say Saudi started right after. Right now, Saudi, one of the biggest destinations is Nairobi for them in Africa. Just the pure number of freighters and the cargo probably is completely changed after the show. And same goes with South Africa also. There's so many new freighter operators starting, say, be it Durban, be it in Cape Town, be it in Johannesburg. Because when the airline comes out here and sees the potential in Africa, he then starts, they then start the flights out here. And I think we have done a good job in promoting Africa to the rest of the world. Other news making headlines this week, MassMart continues its sustainability drive and South Africa risks weakening its foreign investment environment with the security bill amendment. South African retailer MassMart is continuing to improve the operating efficiency of its stores by adopting more sustainable technologies such as light emitting diodes and daylight harvesting cells for lighting, rainwater harvesting for water supply and evaporative cooling technology for temperature control. 
MassMon is involved in a number of energy efficiency strategies um, across the group. Specifically in Builders Warehouse, we, uh, in our new stores, we look at three areas. The use of LED sales floor lighting to reduce our lighting consumption, daylight harvesting cells which allow a natural light into the stores, and the use of evaporative coolers rather than typical HVAC systems. Uh, one of the key features of the store is that the LED lighting interacts with the daylight harvesting through a building management system. Not only are each of the LED lights uh, equipped with a light sensor, which makes them dimmable and reduces consumption, but the BMS system monitors the lights throughout the store and turns off the, light, the, the LEDs where, 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 daylight, where there's sufficient daylight harvesting to light the store. The added benefit of making use of daylight harvesting is that it improves the shopping environment, natural light, um, and the natural light benefits customers. Despite the overwhelming positivity surrounding the majority of the changes contained within the Private Security Industry Regulatory Authority Amendment Bill, one clause has unintended consequences capable of damaging South Africa as an attractive investment destination and breaching several international trade agreements. We have um, six broad concerns with the legislation. Number one, uh, we think that the process that was followed to introduce the legislation was flawed. It breaches South Africa's international trade obligations. It's immensely damaging to local and foreign, invest and foreign investment into South Africa. We have reason to believe it's unconstitutional. Uh, there are a number of quite severe unintended consequences that this legislation um, or that the limitation of foreign ownership brings with it uh, in terms of the implementation of the legislation. And Mostly, we believe that it does not address the alleged national security concerns that it um, arguably sets out to try and address. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.